Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Beauty with a Twist. I'm super excited for this week's episode because we have a special guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm the Lash Cowboy. Uh, my name is Abel DeLeon from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I flew into um, California just to meet this uh, special person. Ah, you guys <laughs> fucking flew in for me, bitch. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of fangirling right now. Can I tell you my upper lip is sweating? <laughs> like I need a little blot, but it's okay because... I was telling my manager that I was stalking you a long time ago. He actually found you. And then uh-huh. for you to be here right now, I'm like, fucking, what the fuck should I say? You know, well, it's <laughs> funny because like I would watch a few of your videos and I'm like all into him. I'm like, OK, like now nah, I, I got to follow because it was really yeah. intriguing. So then as um, soon as I followed and sure enough, like what, like a few days later, you like, I think it was a day. It was it a day? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not a few I days. I can't remember. Yeah. Cause like, my, you know, I have all these DMs come out of nowhere. So it's like, and I'm like, hold on, this is the podcast that I started uh, following. <laughs> because let me tell you, I think I hit you up. You followed me and I hit you up that day. I was like, fuck that. Yeah. This is an opportunity that I'm not going to miss. And then I boom, boom, boom. And then here you are. Yeah. And I'm super excited. Thank you for I'm flying excited in. excited as well. So for those who don't know, go ahead and tell us a little bit about you, what you do. So I'm a lash artist. Um, I pretty much started about, uh, I would say today, like five years ago. Started five years ago. My wife started the whole beauty business. Um, so she started the business uh, back in, I want to say, 2014, 2015, around there. Mm-hmm. So she started the beauty business doing... Um, eyebrows and then from eyebrows she started doing makeup and then she was like i want more so she started getting extensions and then um now that when i came in it was like 2019 uh-huh. i always wanted to either be a police officer or a mma fighter and try to work my way to the ufc oh but okay. i was just that was just too busy like <laughs> uh, i was in the gym every day and I was, I was like missing you know events for my kids that's how committed i was and then um Got into healthcare as a nine to five, and then from healthcare uh, they laid me off because of COVID. That's when COVID hit, mm-hmm. and then from there they called me back, and I was like, "She told me, well, why don't you just join the beauty industry with me?" And what I'm the like, heck "Yeah." You told him that, yeah, <laughs> girl. Yeah, so she's like, "Why don't you just join the beauty industry?" And then um, I was actually um following her journey through that whole lash journey. Um, I started watching these two couple the, well this couple um which is mike and shauna from live bay actually i think i've seen them before yeah yeah so i was like if this guy can like help out his wife you know in the industry uh-huh. why can't i you know so then i started watching their podcast and then i started to get really into it and like i think i can do this you know and then i'm like there's not a lot of guys that do um extensions no. either so i was like nails just, yes yeah. lashes no yeah, yeah. Nails, like, I, I would see, like, you know, guys that would do nails, and then I would see, what else, guys that would, I would say, like, do um or either esthetician or makeup, actually yeah. makeup. Yeah, yeah. So um I uh, followed Jeffree Star, uh, Mario, <laughs> all those guys. Like, I, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I started following all those um artists, and then I'm like, you know what? I, at first, I was kind of like, what would people think, you know? But yeah. People are going to judge you either way if you are doing good, if you're, you know, mm-hmm. doing like lashes or whatever it is. People are always going to judge you. So why not just do it? You know, yeah. go for it. So um, I just felt like like I was like, you know what, just ignore all the noise and just go for it. Yeah. Right. And then five years later, here, here I am. So. so did you take a course or did you kind of just like self teach yourself like self talk or did you go to her lash appointments and fucking watch her lash tech yeah. <laughs> and do her lashes like how did you learn yeah actually she taught me so like everything i know she taught me and um i would sit there and watch her lash and then i would um watch some videos here and there like mm-hmm. on um on uh youtube here and there but the majority of it was from her if i wanted to learn something a little different just to get a point of, a different point of view yeah. then i would watch other people too just to kind of see what their minds are doing yeah. that's just how i am if i want to learn something i'm going to make sure that i focus on that particular um craft you know yeah. just to always master it so yeah um so yeah i sat there most of the time and i'm like you know what uh so i originally i started with teeth whining and i'm like and then i did lip blush which is permanent makeup. Fuck? Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, 
I'm not really liking this. And then I was like, let me try lashes. So I started doing classic lashes for like a good six months. Uh-huh. And then I'm like, I want I want more. Yeah. You know, I, I'm loving my work. I'm loving the reactions of people, you know, just off of classic lashes. And, yeah. you know, they're not really too much dramatic. Yeah. It's just more natural look. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm going to start learning volume lashes. So she started teaching me. But like for the first two months, I could not get it. it. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Like my fat fingers, I was just sitting there. I was like, man, I can't. I was like to the point where I like tossed my tweezer on the floor. I'm like, I just pissed. can't. Yeah, you're annoyed. Yeah, so I was like, I just can't. I can't do it. And she's like, what do you mean? It's just, it's. She would like yell at me. She's like, it's simple. Look at, look, look. Yeah. So you would majority would you practice on your wife or would you like for me for example if uh-huh. I'm seeing a guy do it I'm kind of like okay I'm not intimidated I'll fucking yeah. go to you you know but at the same time I'm like how does he actually like. Is the retention, is it going to last? Like, I'm kind of hesitant too, you know? So how did you get models or clients to trust you? So I started to do on mannequins first. And then I did my sister-in-laws. Okay. I would work, work, work on them and then my sister too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would work on them for a little bit. It took like about like a good three, four to maybe five the max hours on mm-hmm. them. And I would just sit there and like, man, and I was like, I just still can't get it. So I took a break. For a good, like, like I would say, like, a good four months because I was just so frustrated. So I stuck with classic lashes again. And then I just took um, clients for classics. And then I was like, you know what? I want to, I need, I need to make some more money. I need, I want to get this down. So I went back at it. And then I had her look at me, um, work on it. And then she was like, this is what you're doing wrong. So it was like one little tweak. She was like, yeah, don't worry about don't worry about how it's so perfect. Like once you dip it into the glue, it's going to close and it's going to be a perfect fan. Because you so, were trying to make it perfect before you put it in the glue. Exactly. Oh, uh, okay. You know, mm-hmm. So then she was like, just dip it in the glue. It's going to come together and then just place it on the lash right away. Mm-hmm. As soon as I got that mentality, all right, just it's going to go in the glue. It's going to go in the glue. <laughs> <laughs> then that was a wrap. Yeah. Then I started to master the mapping and just to get the hang of it and then yeah so but like your clients like did you take some right away did you like be home bait like how did you do it so going back um i started taking clients little as soon as she seen i was ready Uh with my sister-in-law's and sister she's like okay now you can take on clients Uh but just let them know that hey this is you're you're new you're still trying to get the hang of it is um it's gonna take about three four hours tops if you let them know ahead of time then they'll be They'll, com- they'll be comfortable and yeah. just let you do with them. So. so how long was your first like client? Like how long did you? <laughs> I would say like a good five hours. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so in the beginning you were like, okay, I'm taking a yeah. long time. Yeah. She was like, you got to. She was like, you know what? She's like, I-, I know I don't want you to worry about speed, but like these people are here for like a good four or five hours you, I, I need you to push it yeah and how are you going to make your income at the time like i'm thinking four hours five hours you could take two clients that's 10 hours and you're charging what a hundred and not even like when i was first taking clients as a newbie i was only charging like maybe mm, like eighty dollars to a hundred at See? first for and the like first it, few people yeah, yeah and so. you divide that by five you're making i don't know math I'm dumb, <laughs> but I don't You're know. You're making like at least maybe it, depending on how many clients. So like, let's just say I got like three in the week. Probably like only like like yeah. Two, Whatever the fuck whatever that is. is. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like two to three. I don't know. I don't fucking know. But yeah. So, so okay. So then after that you were like I think maybe because you were just so a perfectionist. That's why you took the five hours. Mm-hmm. You know. But after that you just started. I started to like you know, I was still perfected, but kind of had that mindset like, you know, these people isolate right away, dip it in the glue, get it pinch, like just work fast. Yeah. It's like because I used to work in the factories when I was younger, too. So, you know, when you work in factories, it's like move, move, fast. move. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like I had to get to that mindset. Now it's like, all right, well, you know, like work, 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 work. Um, Even when I was doing uh sales too, like working in phones for like, um, I would say, I think it was cricket back then. <laughs> <laughs> I was selling phones and I'm like, I had to close out that deal. So work fast, close out the deal with these people, get the people to, you know, Bye. purchase. And mm-hmm. then, yeah, so I had to have that mindset 
turn it around and just like work fast. Don't get comfortable sitting there and just taking your sweet ass time. Yeah. You just have to like get to it. Get like, to yeah. it. Yeah. Do were a lot of girls intimidated because you were a male? Like you ever get like <laughs> I don't know where they were like to a guy doing my lashes. No, yeah. there was some. They were like, because there was times that would they would come in. They were like, I have an appointment with Abel, and like I'm sitting there, and they think Abel is a girl. So like, <laughs> some of them, they were like, they think I'm like, I'm like, yeah, like I'm your lash tech. Nice to meet you. I'm Abel. I'm gonna take care of you. And they're just kind of like yeah. hesitant. Like they think it's my wife. I'm uh-huh. like, I'm able. So then they're like, sit down. And then we kind of, I open up to them and start a conversation. And then after that, they're like, more calm. They're, they're more like, calm. Yeah. So a lot of those clients, did they ever come back where they kind of like, oh, one time think is he's like, mm, guy, <laughs> you know? Um, I had some uh, that would, uh, like, very few that would do that. Uh-huh. They're just like, I'm going to give him a shot, see what he's about. Yeah. And then they would, you know, I wouldn't see him again. And then there was some that would start it sticking with me and then see that I was starting to approve more and more. And then that's when I started to blow up like on TikTok and yes. Instagram. And that's where I'm like asking, like, did you have this page when you were doing lip blush already and you kind of transitioned it to lashes? Yeah. So I had a little bit of my lip blush work on the page still uh-huh. um, because I just like to have people, you know, know that how far I came to. Yeah. Like I was... You know, I've been in this industry for like a long time. So I just want to show people too that, you know, I know what I'm doing with, with the beauty industry and customer service and how to take care of you. And yeah, pretty much, you know, just to give them that comfort. And like, mm-hmm. I'm not some newbie that's just starting like within a year and taking people. Yeah. Or just this guy that started on um, social media and started blowing up right away. And oh, he's just the one. Hit wonder wonder yeah and so yeah i was like no nah, fuck that like i want to show you guys like i've yeah. been doing this a long time and um you know thanks to my wife too just like having me like just she was kind of like the underdog too she was like one of the first ones in the city doing extensions and i felt like i if i can be there and do this for you then we would make a name for ourselves yeah because there's not a lot of guys in the industry so did you yeah. start off tiktok or you blew up on TikTok and that's how you got your phone. So I blew it? up on Instagram actually. On and Instagram. then um and then it started to well it was it was funny because I uploaded the uh, like videos on both platforms. Uh-huh. So both of the platforms started blowing up like just Crazy. out of nowhere. Yeah. And like every time there's little notifications like hey, like follow, follow or comments, you know, and just yeah. like we what a lash artist what the fuck like we no. don't see any like and, lash artists yeah, in here so yeah. and but, it's because like the lash cowboy i think it's your look yeah that has a lot like when i seen you i think i was like a fucking cowboy a lash artist this is crazy like the way you present yourself it was so different and that's what makes you stand out like automatically you know you'll get noticed because of your look and how yeah. you present yourself so that's why i'm like okay what the fuck like this is drawing my attention you know <laughs> yeah. so that's why i could see why you blew up yeah you know? like and it, it you know uh, when we first started like when i started social media i felt like i wasn't seen like even though i did lashes as a guy mm-hmm. but then i started to transition to more of creating the brand for myself yes that's when things started like to pick up and that's what i'm I'm here to um present uh, do a presentation on at lash Con, yeah and like teach people like how to build a brand and like you know get out there more not just being in the industry but being out there more and just being you you know yeah. as yourself because you know i was always into the western um wear and all that stuff because my family would be in texas and houston so i would go over there visit and i seen people just um wearing like western stuff and like cowboy hats and like so you got into it yeah yeah Yeah. so like where i'm from in milwaukee wisconsin like no one people look at you like what the fuck is he doing (laughs) or kind of like thinking like oh like he's mexican of course like that's what they wear like you know kind of like labeling you right yeah yeah but like when in texas everyone's just there like either if you're mexican black white everyone's wearing western wear and everyone's just like you know doing their own thing so i was like all right well if i'm always here i might as well just look the part uh, right yeah. just <laughs> started getting yeah. into it and not only that like my grandpa too like the whole cowboy thing you know i would get shit about like 
oh, you're not a real cowboy. You don't get your hands dirty and all that shit, right? You fucking do lashes, motherfucker. Right? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you know, well, it's like, I don't have to get my hands dirty. Like, yeah. it, it's it's in my DNA. It's my culture. It's, um, you know, Mexicans and blacks were the first um, cowboys, vaqueros, back years ago. The rancho. Right? Okay. So it's like, uh-huh. I ha- like, I can rip. I can wear this shit, you know? And, um... My mom told me, too, when I was younger, like, you know, before my grandpa passed, too, like, um, when he was younger, he would take care of Vicente Fernandez's horses when he what? was younger. So, yeah, like, and then there's, like, these pictures of him and, like, this cowboy hat and then carrying me, too. And then I was, like... So you were, like, shit. really raised <laughs> into it. Yeah. So people can't tell you shit because you're, like, I was raised into it, yeah. like, you know? Yeah. So it makes sense. Yeah, like, now you see people, like, doing, like... um trying to match their aesthetics and you know getting it into their you know which is good because we want to uplift that that western wear stuff yeah. and you know get out there more but um you know it's just that's what i let people know that i can rep and i can wear this stuff i don't have to be um a cowboy that gets my hand dirty yeah. and you know um picking up or shit whatever yeah. so and you know what i think that's a good topic because i feel like a lot of people are like how do i get my name out there how do i get you know big on instagram or tiktok or like why isn't my instagram blowing up like i'm doing such good work mm-hmm. but my work isn't blowing up like why and i think that's a good thing because they didn't make a brand for themselves mm-hmm. they're not standing out right. yes the content yes your brows look really good but the brand yourself it's not like I'm I'm skipping. Right. You know what I mean? So I think that's good. Yeah. Anyone can do like eyebrows or lashes. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. How are you going to stand out? Right. And years ago when we started, that's all you would see is work on the page. You're like, oh, like, look at all these sets. But who's the person, person. behind this? Yes. Right. So it, um, I feel like that was very important to really get out there. Like, for example, I, I always use Kim Kardashian a lot because... When she started, it you know reality TV, right? Uh-huh. And then I- started putting her business out there, uh-huh. being more and more, and people know this person now. And now it went from the reality show to Skims, then to Beats, yep. and then to other opportunities. So I feel like it's very important to build yourself as a brand and have people get to know you first, and then they see that they um, can relate, and then have that relationship. Like I want to support that person because yes. I like what they're doing, right? Yeah. So. And I feel like that's so true because I don't know what the fuck it is, but <laughs> I post my work and it's good, right? And it's it, it, it does good. But I post myself uh-huh. and it's quadruple. Yeah. And I'm like, bitch, I ain't even that interesting. <laughs> like, and well, you like, are because it caught my attention. I so. know, but you know, to me, it's like uh, my friends just know me like how I am. Yeah. My boyfriend's fucking sick of me. But <laughs> everyone is like, oh, that's not just how she is. But I post myself online and I don't know why it's just it blows up way more yeah than my and it's because you know people want to see the person and they like to know your they're cheese muscles they yeah. like to know your personal life they like to see what you do because they want to relate to mm-hmm. what and I think that's why and I mentioned this in another podcast lifestyle videos or you know reels of you being in it like yeah. how you have your reels and you're in it and you're doing lashes you being in it gets more views, right? Right, right. right. Because it's like catchy. It's like, uh, like I catch myself doing that once in a while, like just looking at videos and seeing what this person's doing. How, like, for example, bra videos, right? Yeah. I see like my, I'll like help my wife make her videos and I like to see the transformation from start to finish, finish. Mm-hmm. how the whole process is and then who's doing this work, right? And back then, like people would post work and then they'll just be like, I did it, but then claim someone else's work and pretty much is a fraud about it, right? And what? they're like, yeah. So they're like, kind of take that, use that picture and be like, I did these eyebrows, come see me, come book an appointment. But then you're like, what the fuck? But, like, well, yeah. You go and then it's like, this it's is not your work, work right? right? Wait, is that way? Like people watermark, right? They yeah, use now that. they do watermarks and now they're showing themselves like, I did this from start to finish, right? Yeah. So it's like, like you expect these nice ass bras and then you go in there and then you come out looking like a chola you're like <laughs> <laughs> so you're like what the fuck like what you do to my eyebrows like but yeah so now people watermark and then 
you know, they show. I don't really stuff. see that in the esthetician industry. Well, not skin wise. I don't really see that. But lashes make sense that a lot of people like, like, for example, a nail salon. Yeah. They do lashes there. Yeah. They probably post other people's work, lashes yeah. work. On their page, I've right? I've seen it too. Yeah, even um lash brands, they'll like post um artists' work and claim that the product, it, like that lashes the that lashes they're that using, <gasps> is that it's their brand Shut nowadays. The fuck up. Yeah, so that you know that's why I said be careful because it's like people now like nowadays like they just take your work and claim it. Yeah. So I feel like it's important to show yourself and you're actually doing this type of work. Yeah, so. and then if not, watermark it which means to just put your name somewhere, mm-hmm. right? But I see when you do yours, it's like a boom. It's yeah. like a sticker, right? <laughs> yeah. That shit catches my attention. I mm-hmm. always do that too. I always watermark it just yeah. so, just in case that does happen, you know? That and then it's just like, what the hell is a Longhorn doing right there? Like, <laughs> you know? So that's why I always tell her, I'll, I'll kind of get her opinion. Like, is it too much? Like, excuse me, is it too much? Like, uh, for the logo? And she'd be like, no, like, um, well, yeah, I feel like you should save it to the end. Like, so I'll kind of give your opinion on it. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's always important to just put your logo there just so that way so no one's like taking it. Yeah. And that's kind of helped me too when I'm negotiating with um, other platforms on using my content. And then like, hey, can we use your video? But I kind of negotiate it too. Like, I'll let you do that if I get a percentage of what you're making from sharing my video because there's platforms that will share videos and then like some people won't know that like it's like oh yeah i just want to get my video out there get my um name out there yeah and not get paid for it can i tell you something yeah. you just taught me something because what the fuck marlo we should be on this <laughs> you know how many people ask us to use our short clips on their page and how many followers do they have millions millions I'm sure. And I never asked him, like, yeah, of course, go for it. Because I don't <laughs> give a fuck. Like, it's exposure for us. But that's a good point because yeah. I'm like, I don't make shit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, because they're, um, you know, they're making money. They could be making money off of your video, too. They have all these followers, yeah. millions of followers. Yeah. And then they're, make, they're like, using your video to get more follower following and then get most likely paid for it, too. Mm-hmm. So, um. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I started negotiating with people. Um, like, yeah, like, or sometimes brands will let me, like, hit me up. Like, can you show our product on your page? And like, we'll give you this um uh, for free in exchange for this. Sometimes, depending on who it is, if I really like you and I love your brand, like, I'll do it. You know. But if I feel like I don't know you and you you just ask me but you don't follow me, then we're gonna have to negotiate that Hell a bit yeah. because <laughs> I don't. You don't follow me, so why yeah. am I going to sit here and help you out? Yeah. Right, so I mentioned this too. Like, I get brands that send me shit all the time. Yeah. And they always expect, they're like, we'll give you this much um, for this, for if you do a one minute video and you got to do this and this. And can I tell you how many times I've declined more than anything? Because I'm not going to put something out there that I don't believe. Yeah. You know, I get Neutrogena that hits me up. I get Dyers, that fucking witch hazel <laughs> shit. I get them to hit me up. I have so many brands that, I know if I say it, I will get so fucking canceled for it. So yeah. they're like, you're an esthetician, but you wear, you wash your face with the Neutrogena cleanser? No. You know, <laughs> they're going to pay me this much, but I don't care because at the end of the day, I'm not going to put something out there. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. But because now you're doing lashes, you never, are you thinking of coming out with your own brand? Well, I do actually have my own lash brand. Oh, okay. It's just, um, I should focus on it 100%, yeah. but I've just been so focused on like, um building more of my personal brand too you know yeah um trying to stay focused on like my art my craft and just you know just loving the whole thing and then at the same time you know if you love me and support me then i just have my brand there right Mm -hmm. but i feel like i can do a lot more with it it's Mm -hmm. just there Mm -hmm. but you know if you support like hey cool right but i just feel like i should pay 100 percent attention to it because i do believe in my products at the same time so I feel like I kind of lack on that, but at the same time, I'm paying attention to my kids, and your myself, personal. my my health, and like you know, just mental, uh, my mental health, and um, just everything, like just coming in at once, and then negotiating with brands and trying to get you know that going too. So it's just a lot, 
at the yeah. same time. And I feel like when you have your own brand, I feel like that's going to be so like so much 100% attention worth. Like mm. I can't even fucking imagine. Yeah. So Cuz there's what tweezers, lash lash trays, glue, um just all this other stuff that you can add, you can think of, right? But primer? Primer, bonder, um like right now, I have this cleanser, this um, whipped cream cleanser that, you know, was my signature when yeah. I would clean, like, give a lash bath to my clients. Everyone was like, what is that? Where did this come from? Right. Yeah. So I made, I decided to make my own and I was like, well, let me just bring this out and see, you know, um, how, how it's going with people, like how they like it uh-huh. and stuff. And I've tested like for a good, like six months already close to. And that's why people would ask, and I wanted to tell them because I'm secretly behind the scenes testing it, it before yeah. I even say what it is, or you know. And then as, as soon as I started getting close to, all right, this is we're gonna put it together. Then I started people. Let, I started to let people know, hey, I'm gonna come out with it soon, but I'm not gonna say anything until I'm actually finished with the label and everything else. Like it has to be done. Yeah. Because they always say, don't ever tell your yeah. what you're doing. Yep. before it comes out exactly because yeah. then it won't fucking happen yeah she and my wife's a uh, believer on that too in yeah a <laughs> bitch because if i'm gonna tell you what i'm doing then you're gonna go do it the next day yeah because you know i always say this you're the blueprint yeah of your own making like your your own like people will always try to be you but right. you're the blueprint you know what i yeah. mean yeah and i kind of feel like that's you know in the lash industry it's kind of like uh if you do it, I'm going to do it, right? Mm-hmm. It's like that trend, right? I know an artist that has this, like, aesthetic, you know, boss type, right? Mm-hmm. Now I see this art- lash artist doing it, and then I see another lash artist mm-hmm. doing it, so it becomes a trend, right? Yeah. Which is good for that person. If you're influenced by them, great, right? But you can be yourself at the same time and do what you like. You don't have to do exactly what that person is doing. Because, that goes back into branding. Yeah, branding. It's not original. So yeah, yeah. I, I feel like it's a little tough on on what you're trying to accomplish. And if you say something, people are one step ahead. And sometimes I'm like, you know, doing that. Yeah. Same thing. Do you get people that want to be you? Do you get? Do you see other? I don't see anybody. <laughs> but <laughs> do you? I feel like for me, I see like people coming out with you know podcasts and you yeah. know i see i see it but i think again i see people um when you start something they want to like how you say do it but yeah do you ever see someone kind of maybe i would say like before you know i started popping off and you know when i was up and coming yeah like no one wore cowboy hats in the beauty industry no one did western wear right maybe like they'll have like a cow print blanket here and there (laughs) but no one really stuck to the hat right so i'm starting to see it more and more across everything like with barbers um lash or other lash artists um just in general in the beauty industry so i started seeing it more yeah because you're like fuck dude i know that i did this but i started and it just makes (laughs) you feel good right right and it's like that's what I wanted, you know, to have people not be afraid of like showing that um, Western, you know, um, Western theme. Going yeah. On. So I, I'm I'm proud of it and stuff, but like I'm starting to see more people in it. But at the same time, it's just kind of like, where's where's the credit? Mm-hmm. I know you see me. I know you do. I they know you do. They fucking but... <laughs> see you. Trust me. They're like, but they're not gonna say that. They're not gonna give you the credit. Some because I'm will. a guy too, and I feel like at the same time, yeah, like oh, he's a guy. I, I, Fuck I, it, I don't, I don't need to do it. Yeah, yeah. But you know, that's good. So because like when I started doing this whole thing on social media, then you had Mexican OT the rap the rapper too. Who the fuck? Um, he started wearing a cowboy hat, and then now people were like, "Oh, you look like Mexican OT." Like, no, we started at the same time. Like, I started, <laughs> I started doing this shit too. Yeah. With, you know, like, so it's just because I, that's their lifestyle in in Texas. So, you know, I just brought it to Wisconsin and started making it more popular 
in in my state too was wearing it everywhere and people would look at me and sometimes my wife would be like dude just wear a baseball cap today yeah <laughs> i've seen you wear baseball caps here and yeah. there but so, it's the cowboy hat you gotta keep yeah, it keep I, going i love i love wearing it i was like i don't care what they what they fucking think <laughs> about it i don't give a shit like you know or sometimes i'll catch people and they're like oh like looking or like the laugh or like i'll have compliments like hey that's a nice hat where yeah. you did it yeah and then that opens up opportunity to help the brand that i got it from you know that i am partnership with some of them you know make good sales too so you're right yeah (laughs) i have a question okay because it's controversial and you know it blew up on my last podcast or a couple podcasts ago so obviously we know that the lash industry is oversaturated every fucking industry is oversaturated there's nail techs oversaturated estheticians that do facials and wax oversaturated Mm -hmm. lashes oversaturated because now it's fucking lash con right so there's there is lash con there is the hair there's hair and there's esthetician so there's now it's like crazy there's even um fake dentists at the house is doing veneers fucking veneers veneers. bitch first of all first of all get the fuck out of there (laughs) second of all bitch it's just glue okay it's like your teeth are rotting go fucking floss go to the dentist i don't know that's yeah. in another fucking episode. That's a whole <laughs> two hours. But I heard, well, not heard. We talked. I'm not going to say what episode. But <laughs> is, did your back hurt? Are you making money? Let's be fucking for real. Because I heard that you can't make 100K in the first year, but you have to make it. What did she say? Five to 10 years. And shout out to her. I love her so much. But I want to know your perspective because you do lashes are you making money let's let's hear the fucking truth do you make a good income doing this i would say shit like i make over 100k beautiful over 100k a year um beautiful. you know between me and my wife as well yeah um we definitely make good money from just lashes yeah so i would say like depending how you're pricing yourself is definitely a factor of what you're doing mm-hmm. right if you're going to price yourself lower than a hundred dollars you're not going to make shit at all so depending on how you price yourself, if you're pricing yourself over a hundred dollars, you will definitely get to that hundred k or more, even less than five years. Or you can do it within like I would say like three years if you're just consistent, right? If you're a newbie, it's not gonna happen. But if you're gonna, you're, if you're being more experienced, now it's like all right, now I'm gonna um raise up, raise yeah. it up, take it to another level, raise my pricing. And just be consistent and be this lash lash yeah. artist, bomb ass lash artist. And then, you know, being consistent, you'll go definitely get there. But what there. about a newbie that feels she's barely coming in this industry or he's barely coming in this industry and they kind of feel like, oh my gosh, like I'm not getting it. Just like how you were in the beginning with the volume lashes, but they're, you know, struggling and, mm-hmm. you know, like, what do you, it's kind of like hard, right? Like yeah. you just got to keep going. Yeah. So like. It's not going to be easy at the start. Like I was working sometimes like part time at a job and then doing lashes until I started getting clientele more and more. Then when I started getting busy with clientele, then I stopped my job, Mm -hmm. focus on lashes. And then that's when it started booming. Yeah. Like consistently. And social media played a big part of it. Yeah. So you'll definitely get there. Like I like I said, I like to use barbers, too, because it's. Somewhat now you see people charging a hundred dollars a cut, yeah, for barbering, right? Yeah. So like either fifty Crazy. to a hundred dollars. Yeah. So back then it was twenty five. Now I see barbers that are making shit, more shit than that. Was fifteen dollars back in my right. days? Okay. Yeah. 15. So it's like you can, you definitely as a lash artist, you can make a, you can make a lot. You just gotta price yourself right and um, focus on your craft. And if you're a newbie, you just have to put in the work like everyone else did. It's yeah. not gonna happen overnight. Mm-hmm. But once I would say within six months, once you're consistent, bring in more clients, then that's it's what do you have there. to price yourself, though? At Like, let's say a classic lashes yeah. kind of I know they run around one hundred dollars. Right. Mm-hmm. So I would say classics. You Like if if you see a trend of classics. Yeah. All the time. Coming, right. right? Yeah, now it's coming back. Yeah, before it was like uh, now mm, everyone yeah. wants to be clean girl. Mm, so clean girl era. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's coming back. I would say with classics, you would uh, price yourself at one forty, one thirty, one forty. Dang! And yeah. how long? 
and that only can or you can even be more like up to like like i would say 180 for, for classic classics? and how long does it take i would say like for... at least like two hours okay well classics that's it can take less than that depending on like you know what how you feel that day too yeah. but i would say you can make anywhere from 150 to 200 dollars just for classics yep okay we're gonna get caps yeah. can you make that a short clip <laughs> Milo, let's make that one a fucking yeah. short clip because they're gonna be like a hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars. Yep. So what about volume? Tell me volume pricing. So for volume, it could be anywhere from, um, I would say, two eighty to maybe four hundred dollars for volume. <laughs> How long does these hoes last? I mean, like it can, I it it, it can last a, up to a good like three weeks even to a month you just got to keep on coming for a fill Phil. every two weeks how much are fills i would say for fills it depending i i would say from one one uh 80 to 200 for a fill yeah. what the fuck am i doing <laughs> like <laughs> that's going back to pricing yourself that's what i'm saying yes. and then you'll get i'm sure i'm sure you're gonna have people on the comment sections on the shit like well i'm i know i know my lady's charging like 80 dollars, so you guys yeah. are fucking crazy like yeah. i don't like well your fucking lady's like not making <laughs> enough money so yeah <laughs> like shit you're getting i'm sure your your you know, natural lashes are getting damaged I'm sure it's not the great, um, like the best set. It looks like one uniform set, one volume set. It's not gonna, look, and it looks like a fucking, you know, it just doesn't look right, right? Yeah. So you got, you got someone that like me takes this craft seriously, where it's like, if you really want this, really want this set, we're gonna make it happen, right? But at the end of the day, you gotta remember too, you're not always gonna satisfy everyone. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what I try to tell a lot of the beginners, like you're not gonna make every client satisfied so just always like have that mentality too like you can put in you can do like a whole 20 30 minute consultation yes right what they want like yes. you're gonna okay what you're gonna what is your lifestyle you're gonna do swimming are you going to vacation are you doing a wedding what is it that you're doing that, um that you're getting extensions and they're like well, I like a, I'm like, I like more of like a everyday lifestyle look, right? Mm -hmm. So then you try to accomplish what they're gonna do for the day and what they, what they really want. But then sometimes you get that client where it's just like they don't know what the hell they want either. So mm -hmm. it's like you can sit there for twenty or thirty minutes to do a consultation, and then you can like do your best and like, like sweating there, you're like. All trying, right. <laughs> yeah. Trying, and then, and then and they're like, all right, well, tell me how you like. If you need any changes, let me know. If there's something that you want me to take or add, just let me know. And then they're, sometimes they're just like, no, they look good. And then like two weeks later, they come in for a fill and they're like, can we go a little bit longer or more yeah. fuller? Yeah. So I'm like, well, okay. I asked you that in the first place. So then yes. just don't be afraid to speak up. Yes. You know, so. So because those are, pri do, do people tell you like, oh my God, it's like. They never, your clients never question it, right? Because they're like, yeah, they and, know yeah. what you're bringing to the right. table, right? Yeah. And it's like who you're trying to attract to is for your clientele, right? Yeah. yeah. If you're trying, if you're someone that's doing low prices, you're going to attract cheaper paying clients, maybe students, college students, younger people, kids, um, teenagers, not kids, teenagers, like in their 15s, 18s, whatever. Um, and then, uh, when you price a little higher, you're going to get more people that are like nurses, doctors, lawyers, um, Man. shit like, yeah, celebrities sometimes. And, um, sometimes you'll get cheap celebrities too, which is okay because everyone thinks like doing celebrities is all this, oh, like, you know, you made it type thing, but sometimes they can really lose money, lose money for you too, because you always try to work around their schedule. Uh, sometimes they're always late and uh yeah like it, it's, and they don't want to pay sometimes they don't want to pay sometimes exactly because they say well i'm gonna post you and then sometimes you don't even get followers yeah i even had like a few um influencers that would reach out like hey like can you do my lashes and then i'll post you but depending on who's following that person if it's just like uh, only fans model right you're only gonna get all these guys following so you're not gonna make me shit and then you got some, <laughs> so then you got like, and then you got like these moms that do lifestyles, 
And then I'll consider it because they're these moms that work hard and they're like doing lifestyles and making meals, getting up at 3 a.m., you know, making those uh, meals and shit for the kids. And um, I know that a bunch of moms are going to follow that girl, yeah. right? So the moms that, are going to go. Yeah. Money. Yeah. Because <laughs> they stay at home moms. You're right. So. The fucking husband will pay for the $400 lashes, yeah. bitch. Like, yeah. Yes, that makes so. You're yeah. you, you're helping me out. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to be reaching out to the moms. Yeah, the moms are where the fuck it's at. Yeah, so like you know, mom knows this mom, and like, and that's what I always get to when I get clientele that come in there. They're like, you know what? The whole like a nurse, for example, all the nurses love my lashes. They don't care how much they have to pay as long as they last. The retention's good as long as the work looks good and they don't look like too dramatic and they it's something that they don't want because i'll have people that will come in and they're like yeah i went to the slash artist yeah you know it was um for example i had a few clients that would say that i got these lashes done and i only paid like 80 70 80 Mm dollars you know it was like done in like 30 minutes or two hours Mm -hmm. and it's not something that i want or they fell off the next day now you just wasted that, and now you got to go back in and get uh re- like you know try to get them redone because sometimes they won't give your money back. Mm-hmm. You got to go and get redone, and then they fall off the next day, and then you go to someone that you know you're gonna pay for quality, you and and retention mm-hmm. and just the great experience overall. So you always want to price yourself at a good you know not only based on your experience but who you're trying to attract to as your clientele. Yeah. How is your body, though? Does it take a toll on your body? I would say no. If you're doing everything right, like if you're depending what you're using, if you're using like a I would say, uh, honestly, I'm going to be real. A recliner, depending on the recliner, what it is, some recliners are comfortable for you to work on for you and your client. And then there's some recliners that are just like you're trying to like this is a recliner right here. And you're like, yeah, so like it, it, it burns your neck and back burns. So like if it's a bed. You just make the bed comfortable and then you're there on like this. You're like right here and you're just like easily. And I know sometimes some clients don't like the bed because it's like um, they're like moms that like had yes. birth and they're like my back. Yes. My wife was one of them with the yes. I had an, uh, I had children and my yes. back's killing me. I hate know. those <laughs> fucking flat beds. They need to get rid of them. Yeah. I'm sorry, but those Amazon beds trash. Get the fuck on. <laughs> I like this is why I got this for my shop. My lash check is right here. Oh, is she? And okay. this one goes, the legs go up and this goes down and you can adjust it. That's like a kind bar- of like a bar chair a in a way, chair. right? I do my eyebrows because you can rec- see this yeah, shit? See? Go all the way down. It's, it was pretty pricey. But because I rather pay that I know it's comfortable and I know that it's like, why am I going to pay $100 for a flatbed? Yeah. Or $50 for a flatbed when I know my clients are going to fucking die. Yeah. And when you can pay <laughs> a couple more hundred dollars for something that's quality. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if you're an artist that's just starting and you're like, uh, you know what? Like, I know like I can get better equipment than you just put save money up. on the side yes. save up and invest in that because it's going to pay off in the long run. Because I've had clients that come and tell me like, hey. Like, man, I never had a recliner, you know, experience or I never went to a place that had a recliner. Recliners, yeah. I always went to like somewhere where they had the beds and that really hurt my back. Yeah. And I'm like, OK, well, um, yeah, we do recliners, but sometimes the recliner can kind of hurt me depending on what kind of recliner it is. Like I said, there is um, recliners that are comfortable and there are some that are just like a nightmare. So depending on the um, right equipment, you won't hurt yourself at all. Your neck won't hurt as much. Your back won't hurt as much. Yeah. Um, the only thing I would say you would experience um, some pain is your your wrist, your your hands, and um, depending on the uh, adhesive. Um, I know I was when I was first starting out, I couldn't do the black glue uh, adhesive at all. Like my nose was clogged, my yeah. eyes were watering. I would wear a mask. Is that strong? Yeah. No matter what, like. I would wear a gas mask. It still would affect me. What the right? fuck? Are you talking about the whole? <laughs> yeah, Shut like the, the like your graffiti. <laughs> like Stop. I was like, <laughs> you were doing lashes with yeah. that. Yeah, no I was like, way. I was like Bane, like. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm. Oh my god. So sometimes my wife will wear it and I'll like make fun of her. I'm like, what the fuck did you say? Like, I can't hear you. <laughs> Imagine like, you guys are both laughing, y'all look at each other. So that's why you can't use that glue anymore. Yeah, so I use clear adhesive now because uh-huh. It works a lot better for me. Yeah. Like, oh my god! Like, I would, I would, I can do like five, six clients a day with the clear adhesive, and then um, not only that, but the retention for uh, most of my clients are is really good. So it's like, fuck, if this is working out. I'm sticking to this. Hell yeah! And once so, you know your niche, then that's it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. why a lot of nail techs too, I feel like, struggle because of the monomer, the smell, and mm-hmm. you know, it's a lot of chemicals. So I feel like first of all being a nail tech is so fucking i feel like yes it's that's oversaturated too but i can you can agree on them with the smell and stuff yeah that hurts them too and i feel like the wrists mm-hmm. what do you suggest they do for that like they go to fucking- for the wrists i mean honestly just like massaging it like massaging and taking care like you know getting breaks doing stretches like this you know and just like kind of like you there's youtube videos from like I would watch a massage therapist or like, um, what are those called? Um, oh, what is chiropractors. chiropractors. That's what yeah. I was going to say. I forgot the word for yeah. that. Yeah. They fucking. So they'll help you like, yeah. Hey, you know, if you work a lot with your hands, you uh-huh. can do this and like that and everything would be good. So just... going back to that question, then I'm assuming that if you price yourself, right, mm-hmm. you can make more than more than a hundred K without having a toll on your body. Mm hmm. If you doing it a proper way, proper way, and if you're uh, obviously pricing yourself right, mm-hmm. but if you're a beginner, don't give up, right? Mm-hmm. And just keep on being consistent, getting your work uh, high quality, and then if you know you feel like your work's high quality, retention's lasting. These clients are coming back with like almost a good like ninety percent coverage, and you you only have to fill in a bit, yeah, and then they're not complaining, just consistent then you want to raise your prices and like i said going back into like oh like i know someone that does it well like i said it's not gonna last you're gonna pay more in the long run and then you're gonna damage your lashes in the long run yeah and then it's just like you're not getting what you're paying for and if you're cheap fine you're not for me it's okay yeah and then there's people that are willing to pay the price and and that's fine like like i said someone that appreciates your work and someone that's more in the you know, like medical field or like a lawyer and all that stuff. So you just got to price yourself. To the right. And make sure the clients too, mm-hmm. right? That's what we were saying, yeah. the clients. And I feel like that is so true. Yeah. Even for me, I'm starting to think like, fuck. But I've had my regular, I've been doing this for years, but I have my regulars that have been since my home days. Yeah. And they've seen me when I was charging, what, $50 for a facial to what, $200 now. And they don't see shit because they think, they know that, yeah, and I'm like looking at this place. I was like top notch. Like you're in a fucking area that has mountains and shit, like palm <laughs> trees. And I'm like, what the fuck? This is like Beverly Hills, like um, Rodale Drive and shit. And I'm like, damn. Like I need to up, up, um, update my. It shit. took a long time. Okay, <laughs> it was not easy. So it's like you, know? you like even in Texas, same thing, right? Like I I go back and forth. There's people that charge and. They're in the nice area, and um, uh, and their clientele pays that that price, yeah. mm-hmm. you know. And then you got some that are home based because that still do quality work, right? Like great work, amazing work. And if they're home based, maybe they just can't afford it right now. They need to get you know save up and then transition to the shop, yeah. right? Yeah. And because my wife was the same way, she worked at home, and then um, her work was really good. And then, but we left the home base because she would have weird clients like come in and they would shoot up in the bathroom like you know Shut drugs no. yeah oh my god can you come back for another episode yeah. on just you had clients shoot up in the restroom yes yeah so like there was like maybe one and the reason why we found out because someone relayed the message to us like hey you know this person is doing this like hey just want to give you a heads up and then um, I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, no wonder why she spends like 30 minutes in the bathroom. I'm thinking she's like, taking a big shit. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, I'm like, fuck. I'm like, what the fuck? And then she's like, all right. And then she like leaves and then comes to find out she shoots up. So I'm like, what the fuck? Um, see, and that's the so, sh- crazy shit. Yeah. That's a whole, you need to come back, okay? <laughs> you guys, sorry, you got to come back on another flight. Because what the fuck? Yeah. 
So that's why we left the home base, you know, nothing against like all props to them shit. Yes, like, you yes. know, but um, it, I know it takes time and you're not getting like, especially like how we did coming up. We didn't have no loans. We didn't have um fucking parents to spoon feed us and shit like that. Yeah, like, yeah, we did it from zero and like started saving whatever we had and then um started working our way up slowly. Like we had a small spot, went into the medium spot to a big spot. And then um, started charging our worth and making over making like uh, over 100K for our pricing. And then that's when everything else products came in and everything trainings. Yeah. And that just started coming up more and more close to a mill type thing. Yeah. And you know what? It's like everyone starts from somewhere and I started from home and I appreciate everyone that starts from home. Yeah. But I think it's just patience. Yeah. Patience. Patience and just consistency, yeah. consistency and just know that it'll come to you. And obviously every person that I've had on my podcast, I'm always like, well, how long have they're like five, six years? Like this wasn't easy, right. you know, and it's you hear the same story yeah. and that's same different. But as in like I've been in this industry for years yeah. and I feel like a newbie is like, oh, I'm fucking giving up after like what? A couple months. Mm -hmm. But it's because they're not, you know, it, patient. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like I started from home and then I came straight to a shop and they always ask me, how did you go from home to a salon? Mm -hmm. I worked my ass off and I always say this, but not only that, I saved a lot of money. Right. Yeah. I didn't go out and splurge and buy myself a fucking brand new BMW when I knew I was making that money. Right. Or Louis Vuitton bag. You I know, didn't like, do that. Fuck, I got this shit. I like. didn't do that. <laughs> I fucking still was eating my maruchana home. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't even go out to eat that much. I spent a lot. I saved so much money because I knew what my goal was. And I yeah. sacrificed a lot to get this. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. And then, you know, when we were coming up, we kind of felt discouraged, too, because we were yeah. working from home. And, like, she was working and just like, uh, no one's going to come to me because I work from home. But I was like, if your work is great, it shouldn't matter. Right. Yeah. And then slowly started going into we got a suite. She was working out of there and then started getting more clientele just working her way up and then i came in the picture and then that's when we both started to you know and and then it's tough one especially if you're a young artist too like if you're like maybe in your 20s or whatever you're like uh like i don't know if i can do it like you just gotta keep on going and just save your money like you don't go and buy it like a louis vuitton bag like i said or fucking spending it on bottles at bip and all this shit you know you want to put it to the side because you got bigger you got bigger goals so yeah uh, once you can have a good mentality financially, like this is what I want. Yep. Then you can work towards that. Like we have been like, we want this. We want to get this. So we're going to work towards that. And then people are always asking, like, how do you do that? Like you got people that can get loans. You have people that really can't. And it's just like, because where I come from, you know, our, you know, with, you know, Hispanics and Latinos and stuff, they're like, they don't get that. They don't have that financial education, right? <clears throat> so it's kind of like, where do I start? So it's like, we'll kind of give them tips, like, you know, just save up and then you can apply for this loan. And then as soon as you get to this point, you can. Yeah. Go and Sometimes do you don't really need a loan because it's kind of like you just have to work for it. Right. You know, mm -hmm. me, me, I didn't get a loan at all mm -hmm. because I knew that. Why would I want to get a loan if I know I'm going to have to pay it back? It's just going to be a pain in the yeah. ass. I don't want you to run my credit. I don't want you to do none of that because I'm already running my credit and trying to get a spot. Right. You know, I don't mm -hmm. want to go through that. Yeah. I want to use it wisely. I'm buying a house. Buy, and exactly. then now I have to buy a fucking uh, studio that. I don't know, like it may not come how I want it. And, it's and like, I'm investing so much money yeah. and I don't even know if it's going to work out. And then you're going to change it up. And it's like my wife always changing shit. I'm like, oh, dude, <laughs> like again, like, here we go. What kind of chairs do yeah. you want? It's yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> so she'll be like, I'll do this chair and then this chair, like this is going to, which is great because you're always improving your spot to yeah. your space, right? Yeah. So I don't um, blame if you're always wanting to improve your space, which is great, but you just have to be really mentally there to, knowing what your goal is and then Doing succeed it. yeah, yeah. Well, well i love that you guys do it together yeah. that's just such fucking couple goals like my man will not doesn't even know how to put on my lashes okay <laughs> <laughs> i barely taught the man how to wax because i needed i needed someone to teach 
I needed someone to wax me, okay? I just gave birth. Like, I needed him to get his shit together. Yeah. So, already, you know, it, it's just gold seeing you guys do it. Yeah. And it's like, fuck, well, man. I'm you. fucking jealous of shit. I wish my man <laughs> knew how to do that. Before we end this, though, really quick, I want to mm-hmm. touch base. Tell me about this cluster and lash beef really quick. Let's get uh... it because I got some. I have posted a question on my personal. And I had, like, 15 people ask me about this. And I have no idea what the fuck it is. So, like, there's clusters and then there's um, do-it-yourself lashes. Yeah. You know, short. The TikTok, the, uh, yeah, those TikTok shops sell this shit, right? Yeah. Okay. So, like, there's a, a, a beef because, like, you got some artists thinking that, oh, like, they're trying to take our jobs because of this um, alternative, right? And then because it, it can be done in, like, 30 minutes to maybe, like, hour tops, right, for clusters. Uh-huh. You're just putting it. You're putting this glue, and sometimes you don't know, even know what type of glue it is, and you're just putting like a big chunk of like lashes right on your natural lashes, just sitting on there. Uh huh. Glue, 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 and then that's it, right? It looks like a lash strip, but they're all, what they don't know is that they're damaging their lashes. There's some women that listen to the instructions, right? And then there's some that will keep it on more than five days to a week. And it's doing more damage to natural lashes. Sometimes they're dirty and they just leave them on for like a good more more than a week, right? And you're supposed to take them off before you're supposed to take them off within a certain amount of time. They don't. So, and then they don't. So they think, oh, like, oh, it's cheaper. But in the long run, it's going to damage your lashes. And then um, not only that, but like you're you're just placing a big glob, a big glob of like glue like right on your extension. Same with the... Um, those TikTok lashes, do it yourself lashes. Yeah. You're doing it, and uh, some like I said, same thing. People do it. It only lasts like a good two days, maybe the most. And you're not, you're only, you're probably spending like maybe six, ten dollars on that thing, on that product. And then you just, if you think about it, over time, you're spending more money than you're actually. You can just get a lash that, that um extensions that will last you for like a good. Two to three weeks. Yeah, yeah, a month almost. Right, almost a month. All you have to do is just maintain it every two weeks, and it's going to last you. And then not only that, but your lash artist is cleaning your lashes for you. You know, they they know what glue they're using. It's it's good for you. It's good for your um, eye health. It's good for, your, you know, your immune, too. Yeah. You're not using, like, I know back in the day, people used to use new, um, nail glue for clusters what the fuck yeah. this is crazy because and that's going back into the nail shops they'll try to do lashes which the are, are clusters and just easily just whoop, for a whoop, quick whoop, buck for a quick five ten dollars and there's you know sometimes they'll charge more like twenty dollars for the set and then you're just like what the fuck and then they try they'll come to you to the artist that does extensions and like okay like yeah i went to the nail shop Right. And then when you remove them, there's probably like one to two natural lashes on each eyelid. Oh my God. And I'm like, there's nothing that we can do now because you have no <laughs> lashes. lashes. So now you have to wait a good six months, like putting a serum on your lashes. You're like, and there's, I've heard stories where um, they'll get the clusters and then they'll have some eye damage because of the glue. Because of the glue. They get into the eye. There's so much glue on those clusters or sometimes. It just, it's not, it's just not a good. Um, I feel like, you know what? It's just TikTok influencing yeah. people to do it at home to save the money when they don't know what the fuck they're doing yeah. sometimes. It's like, and it's yeah. a clean girl era now. So it's like, I don't want to spend my money. I want natural nails. I want, uh, you know, like false, no, cluster lashes, very minimal or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. it's just a trend maybe. And it is. Yeah. And it's kind of, I always say like, it's like, when someone's trying to fix parts on their car and they watch YouTube, right? They're like, I want to save money and get and fix my brakes and shit. And then <laughs> not knowing that you're opening a door you don't want to because yeah. now you're trying to get this tire off and then something's wrong with that. And then you break a screw and now you have to heat that screw up because I've done it before where I did my own Fucking shit. Fucking going. <laughs> where I'm like, fuck, I broke the screw. Yeah. Now I have to call a mechanic. <laughs> now I have to pay more for that because now he has to like burn to get it heated yeah. to take out the screw and all this other yeah. shit that I could have just need easily avoided. Yeah, exactly. So I always tell people, if you can do it right the first time, then do it right the first time. Fuck it. 
all the other clusters <laughs> easy way just because you See, are cheap and yeah. you're like, all right, I want to do this option. Okay. Well, fucking fuck the class clusters, okay? And, and I was telling him, listen, okay, don't look at my fucking lashes right now. I know you're judging the fuck out of me because, listen, okay? You know, I just gave birth, okay? Yeah. Not only that, I had my lashes and I was telling you, my extensions, I went into labor. I pulled those hose off. Don't don't come at me because mm-hmm. I was in pain, girl. You don't understand what I'm feeling. I was just, I didn't, I was crying. I told my man, I can't do this. I had a lash right here. I was like, fuck these hoes. I was just ripping them. So don't judge my lashes. But I promise <laughs> I'll fly out to you. Okay. I'll pay that money for quality. Okay. okay. I All always right. say I'll pay the money. You're right. Because <laughs> I rather have the quality over some cheap shit that I know that I'm just going to, you know. Yeah. Kind of like, like a, a, with, with a statistician, right? Like oh, you'd yeah. rather have them come fix your face and then they go. So like a Walgreens or whatever, and then do like uh, or Walmart to grab like a facial thing because they heard on TikTok it's good for their skin, but not knowing that person's skin is different from other people. So it's like, what the fuck are you doing now? You broke out. You have a patch right here. And like, uh, like, yeah, trust me. I always just fucking, <laughs> I get with clients like that all the time. I'm like, you're coming in for a facial, but you're using this product. You're yeah. using it because you've seen it on TikTok shop for two dollars. Yeah. Crazy. Well, yeah. that's the end of our podcast. Right. I didn't mention. <laughs> But we always end this podcast with a quote. So if you could think of a quote, something that you stand by, something that you want to put out there that you. Well, actually, there's a quote that I do live by. And I don't know if I'm going to get it right, but I just always have it, it, you know, mentally. And I always tell my wife too, if, if the, um, no, let me see. It's going to (laughs) sound choppy, but if, uh, always stick to the goal, if the plan doesn't, um, Oh, if the plan doesn't work, change the plan, but never the goal. Damn. <laughs> that was pretty fucking yeah. deep. That was so good. I, I think I got it right, but yeah. So Great. I always stick to that quote every day, no matter what it is I'm doing. You know, I, I am religious. You know, I don't know if you get people that are, but I always believe in God. And, you know, I figure if whatever he has you know, um, in in uh, plan for me, path. So I always keep that mindset, just I praying. Love that. And just keeping that to myself. I like, love that because yeah. I'm super religious too. So the osito mio, I love yeah. it, you know. So I love that. Well, thank you so much for flying out. You're welcome. And Bye. I hope you guys Appreciate do it, it again because I'm gonna need you back because I need to hear the shot fucking yeah. story that's a whole nother <laughs> yeah well I appreciate you for having me oh, I, I really mean you. that because like I said I love what you're doing and you know I've been trying to get my shit going on with podcast but I feel like whatever the, everything you're doing is great. Thank and you. You should. Everyone- yeah, do it. I, I maybe I'll see. The come on the lash cowboy, <laughs> come on his own fucking podcast. Yeah. But uh, Shit. Yeah, having, giving everyone the a voice, you know, in different fields. It's, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I love it. So well, we'll hope to see you again. Yeah, and thank you again. And that's all, you guys. We'll see you next time. We'll Bye. See you guys.